Tesla Model Y 4680 battery range upgrade. July 15, 2022. Tesla could be underutilizing its 4680 battery cells in Giga Texas made Model E's and allow for a future software upgrade to unlock the additional range and performance of the battery. The 4680 batteries in a Giga Texas Model Y have about 828 cells. There is also a chance that Tesla is limiting the range and performance of these batteries and the reason may be necessary. Tesla is using software upgrades to improve their vehicles by having extra batteries and power that could give more performance and range than the car is actually capable of having. If you knew you could remedy that with a $5,000 software upgrade, it might not bother you as much. Software upgrades to unlock more of the power of a vehicle are much better than someone trading in a car and buying another new one. There is just too much demand for vehicles and it's much better than someone keep their car and that next car go to someone else. There is some amazing battery chemistry in the 4680 battery cells. It's the anode with the additional silicone added along with the graphite. We don't have a breakdown of how much silicon is being used in the anode. This is where the magic is happening in the battery. Tesla's progress. Tesla has been working on the 4680 batteries for about three years and have been working on it very hard. It will be very important to have a strong energy density for the Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi. The battery volumes for the Model Y made in Giga Texas is about 110 liters against the Model Y long range built in Fremont. At 107 liters. That's a 2.8% more volume difference in the jelly roll. The actual can of the 4680 cell. This means more space and a higher kWh. There are also improvements in the chemistry being worked on and that will take time. The 4680 battery pack could be closer to 85 kilowatt hours and perhaps the total usable battery is 93 kilowatt hours. This is a pretty good sized battery and the actual range being used is about 15 kilowatt hours less than what the size is. If the Model Y long range has a 75 kilowatt hours battery and 330 miles of range and is 143 pounds. Heavier than the Giga Texas Model Y with a potential 85-93 kWh battery and 279 miles of range. How much battery is not being used? The kind of range this vehicle could have is 400 miles of range. Would you pay $10 for that extra range? And you could decide at any time of vehicle ownership. Do you think Tesla is not utilizing all of the 4680 battery in their cars? Will there be a software upgrade to get more range out of the battery? Source reposted and summarized from Jeremy Johnson at Talk News. My take for sure the cars with 4680s in him are being software decreased to prevent the Osborne effect. Tesla China hires hundreds of employees as company grows. July 15, 2022. Tesla China is still hiring a lot of employees as the company grows. The manufacturer has hundreds of open vacancies, most of which are related to production, sales, and after sales service. Tesla continues on its intended path in those departments that are too bloated. The staff will be reduced in production, installations, sales, and after sales services. The number of staff will continue to grow. After the announcement of this plan, the company began its implementation and is now optimizing the work of those departments. The work of which, at the moment, does not make an important contribution to the development of the company. It should be kept in mind that a decrease in the number of employees of a department does not mean at all that Tesla has ceased to care about the work of that department. This is just an indication that these departments had too many employees when they really did not need them. Despite staff cuts, their work continues as before. Meanwhile, Tesla continues to actively recruit employees for its growing factories. According to an analysis of the Tesla website as well as hiring marketplaces by Chinese media outlet Yikai. Tesla is still hiring in China. It is worth noting that the positions are mainly related to production, sales, and after sales service, which is logical as the company continues to increase production capacity, meaning more cars need to be sold and then serviced. The job page on Tesla's Chinese website shows that the company has 742 open positions for people with work experience, with 37.33% of those positions directly related to manufacturing. In addition, Tesla also offers 116 jobs for hire on university campuses in China, 33 of which are related to smart manufacturing. The focus is also on sales and service jobs. Tesla is looking for 174 experienced professionals and has 25 positions for graduates. 
in an effort to cope with the difficult global economic situation as steadfastly as possible. Tesla is optimizing its work. Obviously, this implies a careful review of the importance and contribution of all departments and some individual employees. Although some specialists will lose their jobs, Tesla still continues to offer tens of thousands of jobs around the world, increasing their number by the hundreds every month. Ultimately, despite any layoffs, the total number of employees at Tesla continues to increase. Source reposted and summarized from Eva Fox at Tasmanian. My take Tesla China just keeps on hitting it out of the park. Soon Texas and Germany will be as well. FSD Beta 10.13 should be released next week. July 15, 2022. More than one month after the release of full self-driving FSD Beta 10.12.2. Elon Musk says the next version should be released next week. That version will be 10.13. And according to Musk it will be deployed to internal testers today to discover any bugs prior to sending it out to public testers. Owners hoping the next update might be the big V11 release are going to have wait a little longer. Musk gave a seemingly optimistic timeline saying that it should arrive hopefully end of next month. Putting a potential release date six or more weeks away. However, Musk added that V11 is not as important as it was once believed to be. And that the current version is almost there. This is due to the numerous 10 X versions Tesla has released, which will be up to 24 separate releases, including 10.13 which has yet to come. Version 11 was supposed to be big update partly because FSD was going to move into a single stack in which City Street and Highway Autopilot would work on the same codebase. Musk said that will still be happening, and that it is probably the biggest part of the update. The update from Musk came on the same day his senior director of artificial intelligence AI Andre Carpathy announced he was leaving the company. Source reposted and summarized from Darren John at Drivities La Canada. My take all these incremental changes add up to the final solution. Why do some people refuse to accept electric cars? July 15, 2022. This truism will be quite familiar to anyone who writes or reads about climate change and the technological responses to it. For many years, oil companies and their political representatives insisted climate change wasnt real, even though their own internal research had concluded that it was. When this position became untenable, they shifted to arguments that fighting climate change is compatible with continuing and even increasing the consumption of fossil fuels. While the oil companies rebrand themselves as climate change warriors, they also fund media campaigns and disingenuous studies that cast doubt on the green bona fides of electric vehicles and renewable energy. So, the fraudulent arguments of fossil apologists may be morally offensive, but they are understandable. But what about the people who understand and acknowledge the peril of climate change? But who refuse to accept EVs and or renewable energy? I personally know many folks who fit this description. And I'm sure most of our readers do too. One European friend of mine is a great technophile. He always has the latest and greatest smartphone apps. And we've had many discussions about Tesla, solar panels, etc. And yet, when it was time for a new car, he bought an enormous gas guzzling SUV and is continually trying to convince me that its fuel economy rivals that of my Prius in fact. Its EPA rated figure is 25 mpg. Another gentleman of my acquaintance, who has a young daughter, is as liberal as anyone I know, a committed vegan and an ardent supporter of equal rights and environmental justice. And yet, when he recently bought a new home for his young family, he chose a suburban McMansion that will require a daily round-trip commute of almost 100 miles. Driving. You guessed it. A gas-powered SUV. At this point, our conservative friends may inject that these are examples of independent. Critical thinking. My friends don't buy into the electric car boondoggle. They realize that EVs actually pollute more than gas burners. And that the best thing we can all do for the environment is to continue using fossil fuels low carbon oil. Clean diesel and clean coal. Perhaps. However, the EV's dirty little secret argument. Which seems to float by in the sewers of social media hundreds of times per day. Doesn't stand up to scientific scrutiny. In a recent series of three articles debunking common anti-EV myths. Parts 1, 2 and 3. I provide links to dozens of studies that have demonstrated the environmental advantages of EVs over legacy vehicles. Can it be that my green talking SUV driving friends haven't read my works? Surely, 
before making a purchase decision. They considered all the available literature and weighed the various pro-EV and anti-EV arguments carefully. Well, maybe not. As a psychologist might tell you, we humans are naturally subject to certain biases that often cause us to make decisions without even considering any of the logical arguments for or against a particular choice. As a car salesperson might tell you, people make purchase decisions based on emotion, then use logic to justify them later my friend who drives the fuel-efficient SUV provides a perfect example. We humans are biased toward continuing to do things we've always done. Americans have become so used to spending two hours out of every work day sweltering and swearing in traffic that many of us, including my liberal commuter friend, fail to see that it's insane. Our biases cause us to see every new technology through the lens of the one it replaces. That's why so many people seem to think that switching to EVs will require replacing all our gas pumps with charging stations. Many car buyers balk at going electric because they erroneously believe it will mean sitting around waiting for their car to charge. Policymakers make bad sighting decisions for charges because they don't understand that driving patterns aren't going to be the same in an electric ecosystem. Of course, the baleful effects of inherent human biases are seen not only at the micro level of individual car buyers, but also at the macro level of politicians and corporate leaders. Toyota, biased to believe that old ways are the best is spending much money and prestige to convince G7 policymakers to promote hybrids at the expense of EVs. A California agency that's supposed to be promoting zero-emission commercial vehicles has instead been funneling money to a fossil fuel advocacy group. Apparently believing that slightly cleaner diesel and LNG vehicles represent less risk than EVs. And of course, politicians in many countries love the idea of using hydrogen to fuel passenger vehicles against the advice of most scientists and automakers. Apparently because they're biased to believe that fueling a vehicle has to involve pumping and burning something and because they see a way to keep the fossil fuel money flowing. In a recent article, clean tech consultant Michael Barnard examines several common human biases in the context of climate change policy decisions. Policy makers, decision makers and influences on the core climate action file where we will be investing trillions in transformation in the coming years and decades. Need to have clearer eyes than the average person on the street. He writes, they need to work harder to understand their own biases and blind spots. And also ensure that they work with teams and advisors who have different biases and blind spots to ensure that groupthink doesn't lead them down an unfortunate path. Barnard cites several examples of bias that lead individuals and leaders to make poor economic decisions. Humans tend to fear loss much more than they value gain, which leads people to be unenthusiastic about potentially transformative vehicle to grid technology drivers fear losing control over charging their vehicle more than they value the money that they might earn from a utility. Americans are conditioned to believe that we live in the best country in the world, which blinds us to the fact that we have the least reliable electrical grid among developed countries. In fact, Investment in upgrading and smartening the grid that we all depend on might deliver more environmental benefit than pouring money into public charges that will only serve a small number of drivers. We also have a dysfunctional myth of rugged individualism, which may lead some to invest in overpriced battery storage systems, when a vehicle-to-home solution might make more economic sense. Mr. Barnard also addresses the irrational enthusiasm for hydrogen as a vehicle fuel. A century of depending on liquid or gaseous fuels has left many stuck inside the paradigm of burning things for heat. Their bias due to long familiarity is that the only energy that counts is energy that you light a match to. Many in the transportation and energy industries became committed to hydrogen over the past couple of decades and refused to let it go, even as more recent research shows that, while hydrogen may find applications in certain industrial processes, it's an inefficient and expensive way to power vehicles. Their confirmation bias prevents their acceptance of data which contradicts their preconceptions and means that they vastly over-rely on weak data that supports their preconceptions. Barnard has some similar comments about the atomic energy crowd, many of whom reached this pro-nuclear conclusion in the early to mid-2000s, when it was truly uncertain whether wind and solar could scale, be reliable on grids and be cost-effective. They haven't updated their priors on the subject. As a result, they ignore empirical reality from the past dozen years that show clearly that nuclear is, at best, something which might be useful for the last 5% to 20% of electrical generation. 
not 50% to 80%. Many people are holding on to perspectives that they reached decades ago. And for a variety of reasons are not updating their datasets and analyses. Mr. Barnard acknowledges that he has his own blind spots and biases. And yes, dear readers, your favorite Ev writer has them too. Having biases doesn't mean we're stupid. It means we're human. Certain biases are hardwired into our brains. And some of the strongest biases are those that hold us back from taking chances and trying new things. Updating our priors is one of the hardest things for us humans to do. But now the ecosystem that supports all life on Earth is threatened. And to make the kind of radical change required, we're going to have to confront some of these biases and overcome them. Source reposted and summarized from Charles Morris at Avanex. My take it's human nature to be be afraid of major disruptive changes. Also, the oil and gas companies have done such a great job creating FUD for EVs.